In this video, I'll talk about the time and energy commutator. First, I want to show you the conclusion of this video. The uncertainty of time multiplied by the uncertainty of energy is greater than or equal to a constant h bar over 2. h bar is the reduced Planck constant. h bar is equal to 10 to the power of negative 34 joule second. What does that mean? If we are trying to measure the energy of a system within a very short time period, let's say 10 to the power of negative 34 second, the uncertainty of the energy being measured is going to be roughly 1 joule. If we measure the energy of a system within a longer time period, let's say 10 to the power of negative 10 second, and then the uncertainty of energy is going to be 10 to the power of negative 24 joule, approximately. So first, let's review the definition of the commutator. If we have two operators A and B, the commutator of A and B is simply AB minus BA. Isn't this zero? Not necessarily. For some AB operators, this is zero. For some others, this is down zero. If AB is equal to BA, we say A and B commute. If AB is different from BA, then the commutator is now zero. We say A and B do not commute. For any arbitrary function f of x, we can apply the AB commutator to f. We get this result. We can also apply B operator or B A commutator to f, we get this result. Therefore, we can easily see that the AB commutator is the opposite of the BA commutator for any function f. So this is one of the conclusions about the commutator. When AB is zero, again, we say A and B commute. We know AB equals BA, the order of applying these two operators to a function does not matter. For example, this is the first derivative operator. This is the second derivative operator. These two operators commute because if we apply these two operators to a function f, it does not really matter if we apply this one first or this one first. A, B, and B, A are both equal to the third derivative of that function. In quantum mechanics, commutators are very important. Let's say A and B are quantum mechanical operators. They are associated with observables or physical observables A and B. If the commutator of A and B is zero, we know that this physical observable A and the other physical observable B can be determined exactly at the same time. For example, the momentum operator and the kinetic energy operator do commute. Therefore, it's possible to determine the momentum and kinetic energy of the same system exactly simultaneously. What if the commutator of A and B are not zero? Well, that means A and B cannot be determined exactly at the same time. This leads to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the uncertainty of position times the uncertainty of momentum is greater than or equal to a constant, again, h bar over 2 h bar is roughly 10 to the power of negative 34 joule second. Why is that? Let's evaluate the commutator of the position 
and the momentum operators. It doesn't matter if you put PX in front of X or this way. The conclusion is going to be the same. Let's apply this X and PX combinator to this function F. Going through this derivation, again, it's a little tedious but doable with basic knowledge of differential calculus. The result is this. It's a constant times that function f. Again, f is an arbitrary function. It can be anything. So what does this mean? For any function f, when we apply the x and px commutator to that f, the result is a constant times that f. The constant is ih bar. So really, this commutator is equivalent to this commutator, uh, to this operator, ih bar operator. This is an operator originated from a constant. By applying this ih bar operator to any function, it's equivalent to the product of this constant and the function. Again, in quantum mechanics, if you have the commutator of two operators over here, to be non-zero, it suggests this following inequality, the uncertainty of x times the uncertainty of the momentum is thus greater than one half of the magnitude or modulus of this constant. In this case, ih bar is an imaginary number. Its modulus or magnitude is h bar and then divided by 2, we have this constant here. h bar is, again, the reduced Planck constant, h over 2 pi. So h over 2 pi over 2 is roughly 0.08h. Similarly, for a two-dimensional rotation of a rigid rotor, rigid rotor means the rotation is done with a constant radius r. Over here, it says r to emphasize this radius is constant. I'm using r naught here. There's going to be an angle operator theta. It tells you where the particle is. The angular momentum operator, L, is the cross product of the radius operator and the momentum operator. The radius operator is simply multiplied by the constant radius. The momentum operator, again, it's negative i h bar d over d ok. On the bottom, it's not simply dx because it's circular, so I'm going to say it's ds. And ds is equal to r naught d theta, so we can write the momentum operator this way. And then when we do cross product, make sure you realize this r vector and the momentum oper uh, operator or momentum vector are orthogonal to each other. Therefore, we can say this angular momentum operator is simply the radius multiplied by the momentum operator without worrying about the angle here. This is because, again, the angle is 90 degrees, and sine 90 degrees is 1. Now, we'll prove that this angle operator and the angular momentum operator do not commute. We apply this commutator of theta and L to F. Again, this is simple differential calculus. If you are familiar with the commutator of the position and momentum operator, you will see the derivation is exactly the same, except we replaced x with theta. x is the position operator. Theta is the angle operator here. And again, the mathematics is exactly the same. Even the result is exactly the same. It's ih bar times fx. It tells us the commutator 
of theta and L is equivalent to a constant operator, IH bar, the uncertainty of the angle theta and the uncertainty of the angular momentum together, their product is greater than or equal to, again, h bar over 2. Finally, let's get back to time and energy. We need a time operator T. We need the energy operator H. H, the Hamiltonian, correspond to the total energy of the system. We'll prove these two operators do not commute. The fifth quantum mechanical postulate tells us H psi equals IH bar times the first derivative of psi with respect to T. Psi is the time dependent wave function of a system. H is the total energy operator or so-called Hamiltonian operator. I is the square root of negative one. H bar is the reduced Planck constant. Basically, it tells you if you apply the total energy operator to a wave function, the result is the first derivative of that wave function with respect to time and then multiply by a constant. Now let's look at this commutator T and H. We do this and then we expand H. H psi is simply IH bar times the first derivative of psi with respect to time, or you can imagine this is how the wave function evolves with time. And over here, you're looking at the first derivative of a product. We have to use the product rule. The first derivative of this is simply just psi plus t times psi prime. Psi prime is the first derivative of psi. So we have this expression. And pay attention here, the first term and the third term cancel. Therefore, the result is negative IH bar times psi. We say the commutator of time and the total energy operator is equivalent to a constant operator. The constant is negative IH bar. Therefore, the uncertainty of time multiplied by the uncertainty of energy of the system is greater than or equal to, again, the magnitude or modulus of this complex number, negative IH bar over 2, which is H bar over 2. In this video, we have three conclusions. The uncertainty of position times the uncertainty of momentum is greater than or equal to H bar over 2. This is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Over here, this is about a two-dimensional rotation, the uncertainty of the angle multiplied by the uncertainty of the angular momentum is greater than or equal to h bar over 2. Finally, the most important conclusion of the video, the uncertainty of time multiply by the uncertainty of energy is greater than or equal to h bar over 2.